I'm Jamie Uretsky, curator of New Bedford Art Museum Artworks. And I'm talking art and music with Marissa Paternoster for today's Creative Convo. So speaking of your albums, one that I want to talk about just because it's so like influenced by visual art, we'll say, um, is, wait for it, wait for it, one of the more recent ones. God, All at once. Yes. <laughs> What an apt observation, JR. Well, you got the Bird in Space song, right? Yeah. I don't know why that was my first one where I was like, right, that sculpture, that very famous sculpture, right? Yeah, I think, I think it's, I have a tattoo of it somewhere. Oh, there it is. Oh, you can't really. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> I... I have always liked that sculpture, not really because I think that the sculpture itself is like visually pleasing to me. I think that the object itself and the title of it, it like is perfect. I think like the the signifier and the signified are like absolutely perfect. Like calling that object a bird in space makes 110% sense to me. Mm -hmm. And um and I always found that to be like very, very beautiful and poetic. And um, so a lot of that song is kind of like about striving for that perfection in, in all kinds of uh, aspects of your life. Like, however you see fit, I don't want to over explain anything because songs should belong to the people who are listening. To them. Um, so, so yeah. And then um, when we were writing the songs, we had, a, we had a lot that we had written, but some of them were like really short, like maybe like a minute long. And then some of them were really long and in between, whatever. So I was thinking a lot about like salon style hanging, um, like the Blue Room or whatever in Rhode Island. And um, I was like, this album can kind of be like that. Like we can have this, this one body of work that contains a multitude of, of different like styles and, and compositions and sizes of of music and then hopefully unite them in a way so that when you kind of back away and take it in as as its own unique piece it's pleasing so yeah. that was kind of like the goal and that's why it's also called all at once so um so yeah that was kind of I, and also you know like <laughs> it seems silly but when you're when you've been in a band for a long time like you know ultimately at some point like people are going to start asking you like why is the album called this hmm. and you do need to conceptualize it to a degree because people are going to ask and nobody wants to hear like i don't know because it was cool um and of course there are elements of that too where you're just like why did the song come out this way and it, sometimes the answer really is i don't know it was cool but i think it is important you know the job of the artist is to try and think a little bit beyond i don't know it was cool <laughs> so we try to do that and i try to do that too well and there's also like a whole song dedicated to agnes martin like and and, yeah. it's, and it's not just like agnes martin was really great it's like digging <laughs> into her art practice in a way that if people didn't know that you were a visual artist as well <laughs> listening to it would be like oh my god it's it's talking so much about uh, that person, uh, the influence they had on, um, granted, this is me listening to your music, but like the right. influence <laughs> she had on the art, art history landscape, um, sort of taking down the grid, uh, all this stuff. And then also just when you, we think of Agnes Martin, we think of, uh, the West, the Southwest. Uh, yeah. and I think that that song actually puts out that vibe too. It's crazy. Well, I think it's like when I, you know, um, when I think about her work, I think of it just like this mon, I know, I know that none of, well, no, some of the paintings are big, but like, I think about just like these monolithic, like shapes that are almost kind of like, almost like they're like obelisks sort of. And then obviously like I know about her life and like living in isolation and in, in the Southwest or whatever. So as also a fan of music that makes me think of kind of like bands like Caius or something like hard rock. <laughs> um, and so I think that's kind of where 
the sonically like the riff was born out of I was like I'm gonna like write like some dune buggy rock music to go along with like a song about Agnes Martin and like how much I value her work like how how it looms so it, it's like it looms as like a very powerful force in in my life and in my mind I don't see her art as kind of being like cheery or or gentle it seems like really heavy like heavy metal <laughs> and I don't know why um and then uh, you know obviously a lot of the song is like about isolation too which is like a reference to just her practice and her life and uh being like a true freak yeah <laughs> 